Hello, hello. It's me, Christina Zachary. We're back to you with our seventh podcast episode with Home Sweet Home San Antonio Live. And today I'm super excited to have our guest today. Her name is Heather Wren. She works with Adam Ross and she's a, hold on, I the word was coming to me, exotic. Please help me. Custom, Custom Corbier. <laughs> yes. You know, it's what we were talking about before just now <laughs> with the exotic print. Okay. Yes. Custom Clothier. And she's absolutely wonderful. I love her energy. And we're going to get started today. Heather, hi. Introduce yourself. Hi. So <laughs> I'm Heather Wren. Um, I'm with Adam Ross Custom. We do uh, 100% custom clothing for men and women. It's mostly suiting and it's 100% designed by you, measured by me, and hand cut by our master tailors. They make one suit at a time, so it's nothing mass produced. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, so I'm super excited. Last week, Gabriel and I visited mm -hmm. your store, actually one week ago, mm -hmm. and super duper inspired by it. Um, I really want our video editor, I know that we're also recording for YouTube, hi YouTube world, uh, but we're also live, but I can't wait for people to see your, your cute office. It's just, it's got, I love how it has such a masculine feel, but it also has a touch of femininity. So mm -hmm. I felt super comfortable in there. You know, I just, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that by the end of this podcast, you have more female, um, clients for sure. Yes. Yeah. I definitely, um, at the moment we have a, per, a percentage of my clientele are women, um, but I'm definitely wanting to grab uh, a larger audience for the women mm -hmm. and getting more women in <clears throat> and just explaining to them the value of um, something custom because it, it's really going to make a difference in how you build out your wardrobe, what yeah. you can add to your existing wardrobe. And I'm a huge advocate. I know a lot of people love fast fashion, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm definitely one to educate people on how bad it is for our environment and how 90% of fast fashion that we buy is mm -hmm. thrown away within four weeks. Wow. That's such a sad statistic. Mm -hmm. So let's get to know you better. Um, let's start from the beginning. Okay. What made you come to San Antonio? Kind of tell us your upbringing and, and how you got started into becoming a clothier and all that. So I am originally from Houston, H-Town. Um, <laughs> I'm an H-Town girl. Uh, I love Texas. Uh, the joke is, you know, you know the person that's from Texas in the room because they're going to tell you. Um, <laughs> I met my, I had the, the opportunity to move to Hawaii uh, and I lived there for eight years. Ooh. I was in Oahu for four years and uh, I met my husband and I'm uh I originally was in Maui for four years, met my husband, moved to Oahu for four years. And from there, we started bouncing around the United States. He's mm -hmm. in the Navy, and we uh, transplanted to Florida, mm -hmm. and we were there for six years, had our son. Um, from there, we transplanted to Connecticut, mm -hmm. and we were there for three years. <laughs> and after a good two years of snow, uh, I I'd, I'd never seen snow like that before in my life. I was like, what is this? We're in Antarctica. I was like, I've never seen feet of snow like that before in my life. Wow. I was like, if we don't get back to Texas, I think I'm going to lose my mind. I'm a Texas <laughs> girl. We need to get back to Texas. Yeah. So he was lucky enough, his last duty station before he retired after being in the Navy for 30 years mm -hmm. was here in San Antonio. Yes. And um, this is kind of our forever home. Our son gets to go through the same school district. We were super excited. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how we kind of ended up back in Texas I was like I gotta get home like yeah. it's there's nothing like Texas I'm a Texas girl um I couldn't imagine living the rest of my life anywhere else I mm. love visiting and living in other yeah. places um but this will and always will be home mm -hmm. after being in Hawaii for eight years there were quite a few friends I made that were local yeah and they're like gosh you've been here for eight years you're practically local I'm like nope I'm from Texas, <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiment. I really do mm. appreciate you bringing me into the fold, but have been, always will be a Texas girl. Yeah, for sure. 
Cheers to that, Heather. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, okay. So you said you're a Houston girl. Of course, right. I'm a San Antonian, but right. I do love Houston. But what made you come from Houston to San Antonio? So uh, my husband was a corpsman in the Navy. He was mm-hmm. on the submarines. Thank you for um, your service, by the way. Right. The un- you know the untold stories. Nobody talks about submarines because submarines don't talk about what they do Mm -hmm. (laughs) uh so we were lucky enough he's a corpsman on the submarine he was the doc and his last duty station here was at the core school he now works for the um let me get this right because he might be watching (laughs) the um uniform college for uh He's a liaison with the Navy medicine. So when they go to the core school here, the, the, the new corpsmen go through the school, he helps make sure they're following a syllabus mm-hmm. from the uniform college, and therefore mm. the uniform college gives them um, college credits for it. So uh, lovely job getting out of the Navy. But, yeah, that's kind of – we. I, I, I brought him home mm-hmm. on multiple occasions. I said, okay, we're going to visit Houston. We're going to visit Austin. Yeah. We're going to visit Dallas, Fort Worth, and we're going to visit San Antonio. And, and when we came to all the different cities, he was like, yeah, they're all fun. They're all super different, all different, very different yes. personalities. Yeah. He goes, I could see us raising our family in San Antonio. Mm. He goes, it's just, and he goes, and I've never visited a city that was so ingrained with the military. Mm. He was like, I really feel seen, valued, and appreciated in the city. So it mm. makes a huge difference, you know, um, for him and as well as for me. I love visiting Houston. It is a lot of fun. Um, yes, it is. I got in a lot of trouble there in my 20s. Mm. Had a lot of, uh, way too much fun. So I'm like, I don't know if I want to raise my kid in that. They like, yeah. I know the, the fun he could get into. Right. Um, so I Let's think have a little this bit more is, laid back. <laughs> this is a little more laid back. I think this is mm. more the, the family atmosphere I would want to raise my kid in. It's just, it's, it's a family friendly city. There's more, I feel that kids can do that are geared for kids mm-hmm. that, um, yeah, that are more family associated. Yes. But then again, I didn't have a family back then. So I didn't do family things in Houston. But we yeah. do visit. We go to the zoo. We go yes. to the There's great so museums. There's so many museums there. Yes. There. Um, but I couldn't imagine raising a family in any other city mm. in Texas other than here. That's really amazing to hear. Yeah, we love it. And what made you decide to become a custom clothier of the year? Because that's not a typical when you no. meet somebody, you no, know, no, the, no. their job. It is It is definitely a, a specific genre. Very unique. Um, very unique. Um, the, the, it, is, it has its niche. Uh, I've done retail management my entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started running the first retail store ever when I was 19. So wow. I've been doing it forever, mm-hmm. and um, I've done tons of different clothing stores um, from children's fashion to tween fashion, teen fashion, um, adult men and women fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've, I've hit almost every genre, and it wasn't until my husband got back into the normal workforce, and he yes. wasn't wearing a uniform to work every day, and he realized, you know, I need suiting for my position that I have now mm. and nothing fits right. Oh. Nothing fits right. Is he super tall? He is a medium, Very slim, medium long. Oh, okay. So if he got something that fit like the length of his mm-hmm. sleeves, yes. then the girth of everything was too big. Yeah. If he got it to fit around the waist properly, mm-hmm. then the sleeves were too short. Mm. He kept pulling on the, you know, the bottom, right, on right, the, right. you know, like it just everything feels too short yeah um so for his birthday one year i said i'm going to i I reached out i said i'm going to get you two custom suits Mm -hmm. and um you pick out what you want we're gonna do two um with our two suit package that you get five free shirts so you're gonna get two suits and five dress shirts to go along with them was that and and who was that with what and that was with adam ross custom okay so, um, we were blessed with Kennedy. Hey, Kennedy, shout out. Love you. <laughs> um, she came down from Houston mm-hmm. to help us out because at that point in time, they didn't really have anybody, 
um, working in the San Antonio office. Mm. And the more we interacted, the more she spoke to me. She's like, girl, you need to be doing what I'm doing. You need to be on this side of the desk. Yeah. And we talked about it. Um, and, you know, the one thing I was adamant about is I'm not going to leave my current staff that I have uh, without a store manager right before Christmas. Right. Because it was <laughs> right before Christmas. Busiest time of the year. And I said, you know what? I will. I am definitely on board. I want to come. This is this is something I would be passionate about. Um, but, it, you know, I'll, I'll wait until January. Hmm. Get them through the season, and then I am yours come January. Nice. And so that's when it happened. You know, we we gave ample notice, did the transition, and uh, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah. Like, it is definitely getting the word out. And mm -hmm. it's people like, great people like you guys that um, yeah. see the um, passion mm -hmm. that I have behind what I do. Yes. And the value yeah. in what we do. Um, and just the excitement of like, oh, this is what we, you know, I can build my own suit and I can pick my colors and I can do all this fun stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, this is really cool. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's taken a while to get the momentum going. Mm -hmm. Um, but people like you are definitely helping with that momentum. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm, I'm getting the word out and mm -hmm. we're getting a name for ourselves and we're definitely, um, I can't go to a networking event at this point anymore without somebody coming up and go oh yeah no no no. i talked to someone that talked about you. you like yeah like so i'm super excited about that that we're definitely starting to build that reputation in the city mm -hmm. um as kind of the go-to for custom yeah so let's talk about custom because i'm right. so excited to talk about that now going into your story i will commend you on the passion that you embody mm -hmm. and you just you it shows you can you can tell when someone loves what they do and they glow right. at it like you are glowing thank you all the time so i could tell you're super happy you love the fashion aspect of it you love the, i think you how it comes off is you really love the custom part of it because it's you're watching a person from the beginning of the process to the end of the process yes. and so when i was in your office uh when gabriel and i were visiting it was just the the amount of customization that y'all oh, provide yeah. is mind blowing. Just when I thought I was like, oh okay, yeah, textures, this is great. I love this. Getting expired, you were like, oh well, here's buttons, here's a uh, more thread, and here's this, and here's that, and and this, and I was just what? And then you talked to me about the process. So tell uh, everybody the about the process of. Hey, Heather, I want a suit, mm -hmm. super custom. I got something in mind that's a little bit unique and I want to come to you. What take us from beginning to kind of end? Yeah. So um, obviously we, our doors are open um, Monday through Saturday, nine to five. But we do prefer, you know, if you book an appointment, uh, I do inform my clients when, you know, they reach out to me. I'm like, look, this is not going to take 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, give yourself an hour, hour and a half, depending on what we're picking out and how much we're going to pick out. Mm -hmm. um, you do not understand the absolute amount of detail that goes into every suit. Uh, a lot of people walk in thinking, oh, yeah, I just want like a, a blue suit. And I'm like, okay, we have probably a hundred different shades of blue. Um, <laughs> so are we doing a light blue? Are we doing a cobalt blue? Are we doing a midnight blue? Uh, a lot of it is just educating people on the fact that there's different types of fabric. Uh, depending on where our fabric comes from, we can do our in-house fabric. We also have fabric from other countries like Italy and France and Britain. Uh, thread count the just like sheets the different mm -hmm. thread counts you have depends on the way the fabric's gonna feel and yeah and move uh it, it's a lot of educating so that's what i love about it a lot of people come in just thinking i want a blue suit and they come out super educated about the difference between fabrics and thread counts and things of that nature uh, you get to pick out the liner, the style of lapel. Do you want a notch? Do you want a peak for tuxedos? Do you want a shawl? I mean, there's so many different aspects that you can do on a suit to make it uniquely yours mm -hmm. that I don't think I've ever made two things absolutely the same ever. I love that. Which is 
amazing. It's ever changing. It's ever changing. It's unique to you. Um, and I think that's something that people love is I want to be able to walk in a room and I don't have the same Calvin Klein suit on that the next guy has on. Right. You know, I don't, I don't want to look exactly like the guy next to me. So that's what we aspire to. We really want to make sure that your suit is your design. That's why I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, who's your designer? I'm like, you're the designer. Mm. Like, I'll help guide you. I'll hold your hand. Um, I'll, I, I can lean you like if it were what I was doing, this is maybe what I would pick, but when it all is said and done, it really is their design. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've had a cup talk some people off the ledge sometimes and <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, I want a white tuxedo for my wedding. And I'm like, mm, your wife is wearing white. <laughs> like, why don't we do a really cool metallic silver suit? with Mm. white lapels and white satin buttons. Yeah. And like, we're, and I'm like, and what color is your groom's been wearing? They're like, oh, they're in gray. And I'm like, okay, perfect. Mm. You're in silver, which is a nod to them. You also wanted white, so you're getting your white lapels, your white buttons, your white satin treatments. So it's a nod to what you wanted, but it still is going to read really Mm -hmm. well where you don't have a white suit next to a white wedding dress. Exactly. And so, yeah, I'll help guide people. Um, most people are super shocked at the amount of detail that goes into mm-hmm. it and all the different things. So I do tell my clients, you know, you need to give yourself an hour, hour and a half to yeah. pick everything out. Um, you know, some people are, are really quick about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. Let's do that. Other people, you know, it might take you a minute to determine, like, do I really want to do this liner or do I want to do this liner? Um, so I tell people, give yourself enough time. Don't mm-hmm. think it's going to be done in 30 minutes. It can't be rushed. Right. Um, but when it's all said and done, I think the biggest joy that I get out of everything mm-hmm. is definitely the people that are hard fits. When they're like, I've never had a suit ever that fit me just right. Mm. And just when that comes in and they're putting it on and they, they're fight, the, the face just lights up. Yeah. And that I think is a really the big difference between working custom and working brick and mortar is you can't make everybody happy all the time. Yeah. I would say 99% of custom is always happy. Mm. Cause they designed it. They're and thrilled. It's literally they designed, designed it. For them. It fits them well. Um, you know. It's like you don't have to compromise. You don't have to compromise. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, there's no compromise, which I think most people have gotten used to when it comes to fashion, buying stuff off the rack. Mm. Well, never, nothing ever really fit me ever. And I've just kind of gotten used to it. And I'm like, but why? You shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Not if you can help it. Yeah. You know. For sure. And I love the suit that you're kind of wearing today. Oh, thank so, you. like, you wearing what you design yourself so, um what i really like about y'all is it gets hot here in san antonio and the Girl. humidity is insane yeah. so for the men and women tell us how y'all adjust to texas heat and humidity right so one of the big things that i suggest for my women and can i stand up real quick Uh, is will that kind of work go ahead okay okay so really quick girls ladies like everybody complains (laughs) about two things in their pants one is fit number two is pockets let me show you real quick that is the bottom of my pocket right there Hashtag deep pockets, ladies. Deep pockets. Almost (laughs) the length of my shorts. My entire phone will go into this pocket without any problem. So that to all my women, (laughs) custom has pockets. I love it. So that's my big shout out for for us girls. Like we have a pocket situation in all our pants. We do. They are never big enough to hold any of our phones. We can fix that in custom. So then for the men and women, uh, one of the things I always suggest in Texas is we're super hot. It's warm here and it's warm nine months out of the year here. (laughs) So the thing you're going to want to do, typically what I suggest, go Italian. Italian has figured it out. The mills there know what to do for the heat. Um, when we have fabrics that are a two, one weave versus a two, two, which the British do a lot. Um, it's, has more breathability in it it's a lighter weight um 
you can tell when you come into the office the difference just by touching it. Like I can say, look, feel this, now feel this. Um, Italian just is lighter weight. And that will keep you cool. Mm -hmm. Wool in general, everybody has this misconception that like, oh my gosh, wool is so heavy mm -hmm. and it makes you warm. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's really not. It's a natural fiber. Um, it's a lot of the synthetics that you're getting in your clothing mm -hmm. that trap that heat. Uh, a natural fiber like wool will actually let the heat expel. Uh, we also have what's called cool wool. It's a new fabric. It's mm -hmm. kind of like what I call a high-tech fabric that's made by one of our great British um, mm -hmm. manufacturers called Scabal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually put your hand on the fabric and you can tell it feels cooler mm. than the, the book next to you. Um, it's designed to where the fabric will contract okay. in the heat to give... Yes. So when it pulls back it opens up so you're going to get more, more airflow breathable. nice um and then it kind of relaxes when it's a little cooler so as your body even heats up it will contract because it knows it right. needs to let that air in um we also do what's called a half canvas mm -hmm. so every suit has what we call the guts of a suit it's what keeps this nice construction going yeah so the I would say the vast majority of our items are half canvas. So we only canvas down to here. Mm. So that leaves this with one less layer, okay. which is where you're kind of overlapping and buttoning anyway. Yeah. And it's where your core is, where you keep most of your heat for your body. So by half canvassing um, our jackets, mm. it's going to keep you cooler. Okay. So there's just those small construction things that sometimes... Um, people don't even think about. They right. don't think about like what's inside my jacket between the outer fabric and the liner. Mm. So just doing small construction things yeah. like that, and it, it will make a world of difference. And just not having a lot of, you know, having no synthetics in our fiber really makes a difference when it comes to the heat outside. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Now, in thinking about all of this, seeing your suit, I love it. It's cute. It has cute touches to it, eclectic. So I love that you have a variety of clientele. Right. And what do you recommend? Because I feel like a lot of men can be, I mean, not to, to, to dig on the men, but a lot of them can just be like, I'm a classic man. I like a black suit with a white shirt underneath with a black mm -hmm. tie. So what could, but they're, I think some men want to go outside of the box, but they're, they have to play it safe. So what right. could they add to their suit to make it from ordinary to like extraordinary? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of men, um, do have the restraint from their job of what they can wear. Like yeah. I've had a lot of gentlemen come to me and tell me, unfortunately I can only wear black or midnight blue mm. to work. Like, okay. this is a job I hold. This is the colors we're allowed to do. Yeah. Um, so one thing that we can do, just to put more of their personality into their suit, is the liner on the inside. So the liner on the inside can be completely customized. Yeah. Um, you can put whatever liner you want on the inside. So that can make it fun for you or something you could flash. Um, it's also the built-in pocket square. Hmm. So right here... Whatever liner you choose on the inside, you can obviously pull, let me dig it out, oh pull this God. up and it's the liner. It's a live demonstration, like, y'all. It's like a built-in pocket square. Ah! So you can pull that out so you can be business during the day and then at the end of the workday, take the tie off, unbutton it, pull your pocket square because you've got a fun, funky liner on the inside nice. and you're ready to go out and hit the town, meet your wife for dinner, whatever. So, so now you've kind of taken that very formal business suit that you have to wear all day and turned it into something a little more fun. Uh, one of the things a lot of people don't think about as well is the felt mm -hmm. under the back of your collar. Yeah. Um, you can pick a fun poppy color to put under the felt on, uh, on the back of your collar. Nobody can see that. Uh, I've done bright orange on a black suit. Yeah. And nobody knows it's there until they pop they that collar. They show you unless they want you to right. see. And you can put something fun under there. So uh, depending on what you're into, uh, depending on, you know, kind of, Y'all have wanna... some interesting fabric choices. Um, For the felt under yes, the collar. Yes. Yeah. We've got plaids. We've got prints. We've got bright colors. Um, and then, of course, you can use whatever color you want to monogram something under your collar. So 
this one, I'm pretty sure it's my Star Wars one. Mm-hmm. I am very much a Star Wars nerd. I grew up watching Star Wars. I love it. <laughs> so under this collar, it says the force is strong with this one. Oh, super cute. Yeah. <laughs> so you can put whatever you want. Um, it's it's just something fun for you. I will say for weddings, I usually mm-hmm. suggest putting the wedding date if this is the suit for your wedding. Oh. You can put the wedding date. So okay. the kind of the scenario I describe for them or the picture I describe is you're going to pop the collar on your suit. You're going to have the photographer standing behind you. <gasps> you and your bride are going to look at each other. And then they're going to take that picture and the wedding date is going to be in the picture from the back of... I love the it. Mess. It's a beautiful photo. I bet. it's a, It makes an absolute gorgeous photo. It's a great memory. It's a great way to kind of honor that day by having the wedding there. Yeah. And then it's something that lives in the suit yeah. from then on. You know what? The wedding photographer's watching. Another shot that they could do yes. is during the first dance. He lifts it up and her hands are there and he takes them from behind. So you see the wife, the bride's oh, yes. hands with the brand new rings on and Absolutely. the wedding date. I mean, there Look are... Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> great. I mean, it's a it's a great picture moment. And I feel like you wouldn't get that if you were to go to Men's Warehouse or oh, gosh, no. other no. places. No. Um, I've actually had a lot of people come to me and... Love it. Men's Warehouse has actually recommended them. Hey, Adam Ross is right across the street. I would Google them. They're right there. Um, go mm. to them. They can do something custom under the collar. Okay. I've had a lot of people come and say, can you make a custom liner on the inside? Yeah. So, um, again, they've recommended them coming to us. It does add this about two lot. weeks to production. But um, we can do up to five photos okay. that we can collage together yeah. and they actually print a custom liner from that to go on the inside of your jacket. That's so cool. So the most recent one I did, um, uh, somebody was graduating from ATM mm-hmm. and so he had all these different ATM kind yeah. of things on the inside. Pride, um, uh-huh. I had another gentleman, he is from Texas. He was marrying a beautiful woman from Columbia and so he had the Colombian flag and the Texas flag. Mm. kind of checkerboarded yes. on the inside of his jacket she had no clue as he was walking down the aisle he kind of opened it up and flashed it to her on the way up there <laughs> just as like an homage yeah. to like this is who we are and this and now we're you we're know this is how together. we're, I love we're blending together yeah okay so so us being i'm sure you've heard of it but we've all heard of texas formal yes denim is big down here yes denim 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 so uh, do you have a lot of clientele who come in and they just want maybe not a full suit, but they're like, I, I'm a cowboy. I live on a ranch, but I have to look good sometimes. Or sometimes just men in general, they just love that denim right. suit jacket. So mm-hmm. is that something that y'all do? Do you find that a lot more than people wanting suits because it's the kind of that San Antonio fashion? Right. We do get a mixture. Um, sports coats are huge here. Uh, I really do try to push guys a little more out of their comfort zone. Like, hey, let's do a nice window pane. If you don't want to do a plaid, but we have some beautiful bamboo Mm. fabric that I recommend every time somebody wants a sports coat. Uh, Mm. It's a very open weave. It's such an open weave. We can't even make pants out of it because it can't handle the stress of the the seam. So it makes these beautiful bamboo breathes like linen Mm. and it's just this amazing fabric. And the color saturation for bamboo is great. So it can come with these beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. You can do purple and gray plaids. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with it. So a lot of men here, yes, a lot of dressing up in San Antonio. We're not quite as formal as maybe some other cities. (laughs) Does tend to be jeans and a sports coat or jeans and a vest. So um, it's a great look for here. And we Mm -hmm. do have a lot of... Um, men that come that say, hey, I, I don't necessarily wear a suit all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time, I will sell a suit, a shirt, and a sports coat. Mm. So a lot of times, we will build that sports coat to match the pant from the suit. Mm. So now you have two jackets that go with the same pant or the jacket for your suit. We're going to build it with colors that will go with denim. So yeah. now you have two different sports coats. You can wear with your jeans. You can also wear either sports coat with that pant. So now we've what we call a capsule wardrobe, Mm. Um, especially if somebody's traveling. I'm I'm like, you know, you can take these two jackets, this one pant, 
the shirt we made you, maybe one or two more shirts, and now you're set for the whole weekend, and you've had to take minimal, like, I'm not taking this outfit and this outfit and this right. outfit. You know, I'm literally taking four or five things, and I'm set for the whole weekend. And you know what? I think the most beautiful thing, too, is that could work a lot for women, because sometimes oh, yeah. we can definitely overpack. So if we can mm-hmm. make multiple outfits out of, like, three or four items... And you just like, mm-hmm. all you have to do is pretty much change up your shirt and your shoes. I think that would be such a dynamic. And also tell us the options for women. Cause y'all don't just do suits for women. Right. Y'all can also do skirts and shorts. Yes. So, um, guys, I have made shorts for guys. Uh, we have some great stretch fabrics in our office that are great for golf shorts and stuff like that. But I have done a really nice dress short with a blazer because it is hot here. And so some guys are kind of moving more towards that casual suit look. Mm -hmm. Um, But for women, we can do obviously shorts. That's what I have on today. We can do pencil skirts. Um, You don't just have to do a slack. Um, You can do a crop. You can do a palazzo. You can do a fit and flare. Uh, Women, I think we're definitely blessed with the fact that we can... We can have a little more fun with our wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Um, we can pick maybe some plaids that men necessarily wouldn't use or um, styles that men yeah. wouldn't necessarily use. Men, typically in their work environment, it's kind of pretty straightforward of what they're going to wear. Um, but by all means, men can have fun with a plaid vest or a plaid oh, yeah. jacket or add you know, some fun. My husband has three suits for Madame Roth's. Two of them are plaid. Mm. One of them is a three-piece plaid. So it's just really your comfort zone and what you feel you can pull off. And a lot of our plaids are subtle. Like Mm -hmm. they're not over the top. They're not over the top plaids. So people, when they think plaid, they're like, ooh. And I'm like, no, we have some plaids that you can barely even tell there's a plaid on that fabric to get really close. From across the room, it reads as a blue suit. Yes. So uh, speaking of all of these variety of options, right, Right. that y'all provide, um, what is the craziest suit or pairing that you've done? Mm -hmm. And what do you want to design for somebody? Yes. So I think one of the, I wouldn't say craziest, but funnest things I've ever designed. Um, There were, um, there was a wonderful couple they came into the office. She was going to wear her beautiful princess gown mm-hmm. and her wife to be wanted to wear a suit. Mm-hmm. And she was like, we're doing kind of a fantasy wedding thing. Mm-hmm. And so I want to wear a suit. Yeah. Think Cinderella's coachman. Yes. So Love we it. made her this beautiful white tapestry slack with white satin treatments we did a beautiful short double-breasted jacket Mm -hmm. with tails Mm. with gold buttons and gold treatments and so it came out absolutely gorgeous uh they are getting married this fall Mm. and i cannot wait to get the wedding pictures it is going to be amazing but that was probably the most unique suit I've Mm -hmm. ever built before. Um, The other one had to have been the silver tuxedo. Okay. That one was a blast. Um, It definitely fit his personality. Uh, We did a beautiful silver, white, satin treatment. We did a white shirt. The buttons were metallic with purple stones in them. Mm. And he was wearing a pair of white and purple Michael Jordans. Oh, okay. (laughs) And he is, he is a DJ. So I'm like, dude, you're going to rock this. This look. Yeah. You can rock the jacket with jeans. You can rock rock the the silver pants with a nice white t-shirt. Like you're going to be able to wear this when you DJ multiple times in multiple ways. And that, I mean, even for something that kind of unique and different to still be able to explain to him like you don't have to wear this as a three-piece ensemble like let me tell you the different ways you're gonna rock this yeah and he was like okay yeah i I, see it yeah i see that and so a lot of times it's just explaining to them like you this is an a suit Mm -hmm. this is a jacket you can wear this is a wardrobe this is a pant you can wear with a button-up shirt and no tie yeah you know i mean so sometimes it's just with my clients, I try to paint a picture for them of like, okay, imagine yourself wearing this, but this way as well. Mm-hmm. 
And it really does help with kind of the way we conceptually will build the suit. And I, even for wedding suits, um, a lot of times I'll tell people like, let's build a suit, not only for your wedding, but something that you can wear over and over and over and over again. Because girl math, you know, every time you wear it, <laughs> you he divide said, that, yes, that cost exactly. by that save many money. times. So you yeah. save money. It's, you I save love money. girl math. <laughs> I love girl math. Yes. So what's the craziest design that you want to do? Or like you see it and you're like, I, I won't have wear it for myself, but if someone picks this or what is that? For yes. You? So one of my favorite pictures, I tell people all the time, Pinterest is our friend. Uh -huh. If they're like, oh, I saw this on Pinterest, bring it in. Yeah. Save it. Show it to me. Uh -huh. um, there was a suit that I saw that a girl was wearing, and I believe it was bright orange. Ooh. And it was a pair of palazzo pants. Okay. With a cropped buttonless jacket. So mm. it was just kind of cropped. So it looked like more high-waisted. Three-quarter length. It, it was belted at the <gasps> at, on the pant. Mm. And she had a like a rock concert t-shirt just tucked in with it. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I'm dying to do a pair of palazzos. <laughs> I so want to do a belted palazzo for somebody. Um, I personally love palazzos. Mm -hmm. I, you know, they're comfortable. Can uh, you explain to people what palazzo is? So... The fashion, the trend right now is what we call a fit and flare. So a fit and flare means it's going to be tight from the waist to the thigh to the knee and about right above your calf, it will slowly start to flare out. A palazzo is basically a wide leg pant all the way up. So from your hip... Like a trapezoid in a sense. From your hip, it's just going to keep yeah. that, that width. And it's almost skirt light yes but you have a crotch yes <laughs> and i love those yes. i love those kind of pants because they're, they're so breathable yes and you just can feel like you move and it's it's very forgiving fabric honestly or just oh, yeah. the way it's done i just feel looks. comfortable i am personally i'm not a big skirt person mm -hmm. um or dress person i just i feel more comfortable in pants yeah and shorts um, I just feel like uh, I don't have to worry about how I cross my legs, mm. you know, things like that. Oh, yeah, 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 or, yeah. I you totally know, get it. Um, how I'm sitting. So to me, I just feel more comfortable in them. Uh, so anytime I can design any kind of pant or anything like that, I'm super excited. So I typically have a handful of skirts. Mm -hmm. The majority of my stuff are, are pants, yeah. you know, and shorts. Yeah. I love pencil skirts. I can't wait to come to you and get some skirts. I but I... Well, say I for sure interested in a palazzo pants. Probably palazzo not the orange. I don't. It's, I, don't, it's a I can't pull color. orange off like that. Yeah, yeah it's a unique. <laughs> but maybe color. like a nice burnt orange, like a oh, UT yeah. Austin. A fall, a fall a orange. A fall orange. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could pull that off, but I cannot pull off a bright. Yeah, orange. I'm a fall too. I'm a fall too. Like I can get away with it. Just about anybody can get away with a blue. Um, but I love my fall colors. Yes. Yeah. 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 Now, speaking of adjusting, you were talking about how shorts and um, having to adjust. You don't have to worry about how you're adjusting. But speaking of adjustments, right. um, tell us about, like, I feel like sometimes when I hear about people complaining, or usually men complaining about suits, it's they get it adjusted once, and then the pretty much they tell them, well, this is it. Like, you, you can... Right. You get it either so, like in or out, but we can't do anything else after that. So tell us about how y'all handle that situation. Like alterations. Because it happens. We right. Holiday season and we eat a lot of food and yeah. we gain some pounds. So kind of tell us about yeah. that. So um, most off the rack pieces, anything you buy as far as, especially jackets and blazers. Uh, if you were to open up the bottom of the jacket, open up the liner between the outer fabric and the inner fabric and fit flip the jacket inside out, you're going to see that there's about this much fabric. Uh, you, you can't let it out. And most human nature's problem is I've gained weight. So I guarantee you there are millions of people out there right now with pieces in the back of their closet saying, one day I'll get back into that. One mm -hmm. day I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to get back into that whatever. Um, the beauty of custom is when we build our pieces, we build them with extra allowance built into the seams. So we make them to where they can be let out. 
um, they can also be taken in. If we take them in, we're not going to cut that extra fabric out so that it can't be let out again at mm -hmm. a later date. So the beauty of custom is with Adam Ross, you can gain up to 40 pounds. You can lose up to 40 pounds, which is where we're all hoping to head. <laughs> and we can alter it for free for the first year to continually fit you. Um, if you need alterations after that, you can obviously bring them back into us. We can see the, send them to the seamstress. And um, for a way less charge, I think, than what most alteration places charge out in town. Mm -hmm. And most alteration places have about a four-week turnaround yeah. where we can turn around usually in a week. Nice. So uh, we have a wonderful team in Houston that um, those seamstresses, that's all they do is touch Adam Ross. They won't. They, they don't touch anything else. Very so cool. she is a master of altering what we do. Uh, so yeah, that makes a huge difference. You buy a suit from me this summer and it fits beautifully and then come beginning of December, you want to wear it for New Year's and you're like, Thanksgiving was not nice to me. <laughs> I ate way too much food. Already had too many cookies. Um, suits feel a little tight. Can't really get it buttoned. That's fine. Bring it in. We'll let it out. You can wear it for New Year's. Come February, if it's dry January and you've lost all that weight again and you're like, okay, now it's a little too big, that's fine. Bring it back in. We'll chalk it back up. We'll take it back in. So that's the beauty of custom is it can be let out. It can be taken in. It can be done multiple times. Um, and it will continue to fit you. Yeah. Which is the big difference between custom and again, regular mm -hmm. fashion or fast fashion is sometimes even with fast fashion, the first time you wash it, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't fit again. And so, it doesn't grow back or like yeah. expand. And with our stuff, um, <clears throat> there's no dry cleaning. Mm. There's no dry cleaning. Like we tell you, do not dry clean your suit. The chemicals will ruin the fabric. Mm. Um, the metal plates that they put your suit between to blow that, you know, to dry mm -hmm. clean it, to blow those chemicals through it. Um, well, actually, the plates will crack the buttons. It will chip the edges. Mm. So our, our, all of our suits are hand steam, hand press, spot wash only. So in the long run, the amount of money you'll save mm. just in dry cleaning alone. When I wear my suit, I literally go home, hang it up. I take a hand steamer. I steam out wherever I feel like I've been sweating a little to kill the bacteria, which kills mm -hmm. the smells. I let it air out overnight, and then I stick it back in my closet. Nice. So the maintenance for your suit is going to cost you a lot less. That's something so you're definitely keep saving in mind. on I the didn't back even know end that. of it. Yeah, nice. you're saving on the back end of it, which is great. Okay. Now uh, I want to talk about when we're when someone's in there with you. Obviously, you deal with a bunch of different clientele and all right. that stuff. But sometimes you have people who are just kind of a little bit rigid or they're a little bit nervous. How do you build rapport with somebody new? in that hour and a half. And sometimes you're really, you're, you do get close to them because you're measuring parts of right. them and stuff. So how do you build that rapport? How do you make it really relaxed and chill? Well, unlike a lot of just regular shopping, when you come in, we're first going to have a conversation. Like I'm ask you to sit down. Would you like a drink? You know, she does have some good alcohol choices. We, we, we do. <laughs> yes. Yes. So yeah, let's have a, you know, have a bourbon. Let's sit and talk first and find out what your needs are, how you wear your suit. How often are you going to wear your suit? I mean, those are big factors. Um, we want to definitely kind of get to know you. Mm. We're going to talk story. We're going to yeah. chat. I'm going to find out like, are you from San Antonio? Mm. Have you lived here? I mean, we get to know each other. Um, I'll let them know about who I am, where I'm from, and what I my background, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, people ask me all the time, how did you get into this? And I'm like, oh, I've got 30 years of retail management behind me. Mm -hmm. There's just one more aspect of fashion I never did that I'm in love with now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we get to know each other. And I think that makes a huge difference. And I will say a lot of my clients are people that I've met organically mm. several times. Um, San Antonio is really a relationship built Based. City. Like city. Yes. Like people want to have a relationship with someone necessarily before they do business with them, mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. So a lot of times the people that come in to the office yes. already know me. 
mm-hmm. and are already super excited that mm. they're getting to start the process, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be us. <laughs> yes. Now, um, I know that you usually have people who come in couples that yeah. um, they're like, but they have an event, like a wedding or right. a party or something. But do I know Gabriel and I, we come to you and we're like, hey, uh, can you do matching suits? Because we're together all the time. So yeah. is that something you can also do? Is that Absolutely. And some, sometimes people with different skin tones and warm, cool mm-hmm. tones, like how do you pull that off? with um matching suits for for couples out there yeah so a lot of times um you're right certain colors don't work on everybody some Mm -hmm. colors wash people out um if somebody comes in and they want a matching suit obviously i'm going to try to get something that works for both of them yeah or i'll even go as far as look we can match your liner so your pocket squares match Mm. but maybe they need to go a shade darker and you need to go mm. a shade lighter. So we're in the same color story. Yeah. You know, we're still saying, you know, we're telling a green story, but maybe he's in a sage and you're in an emerald. Mm. But you have the same little liner popping up. So this is where this bright orange on this green is pulling you all together. Yeah. So there's tricks that you can do that we do a pop of color on even the, the button here, your first button here. So you can make those matching. Nice. Um, for weddings, if a, a bride comes in, obviously with bridesmaids, usually there's very specific colors. Yeah. So if she wants them that her husband to fall in a, or husband to be, to fall in a certain color story. Um, I tell brides to be all the time, bring your swatches, mm-hmm. bring your color <laughs> cards, like whatever you have. Yes. Because we can, we've got, I mean, books and books and books of fabric. Um, so we can lay those swatches against the fabric that we found mm. and make sure that they're lining up with the color story you're trying to tell. Smart. Right. Nice. So I know you're trying to get out there in San Antonio and you're trying to network and all that jazz. Yes. Um, oh my gosh, I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, as a business owner, um, what advice do you have for somebody who's, you know, they're like, oh, I'm really passionate in fashion or passionate in whatever they are in and they're just starting out. What advice would you have for, for them? Cause you are now working with Adam for going on four months. Adam or, Ross? Yes. Um, a year and four months. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Not that, not the yeah. January last yeah. year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how, what advice would you give to, to someone who's trying out? Because sometimes you have to stay working in, the, in any industry for like three, four years just to even make it. So now that you're a year and a half into it, what do you have for other clothiers or uh, people just wanting to go into that business or just any business that right. takes that grit? What advice would you give? Um, definitely, I, I do a lot of mentoring. Um, I, I have a wonderful friend that's introduced me to a high school program that the girls are competing with business plans that they come up with. They have to do a complete business model and a projection and everything. And um, I've gone to some of their events and mentored them. And I've told them, you know, as business people, we kind of have to be chameleons. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize the event we're going to and understand the type of attire we need to wear for said event. So obviously as a clothier, if I'm bringing someone in that I'm super close with, it's a friend, yeah, I might be able to dress down a little for that particular event. Mm -hmm. If I've got a brand new client coming in, um, yeah, I might want to dress a little more, you know, to the nines just to be like, Hey, yeah, this is kind of what I do. Yeah. Um, For young professionals out in the world, I tell them all the time, if you want to make an impression on a room, if you're walking into a networking event um, or any any kind of event and you want to be the person that somebody remembers... Mm be the dress best person in the room, mm. have the three piece suit on because they're yeah. going to remember you. Even if it's not right off the bat, next time they see you at another event, they'll be like, Oh, wait a minute. You were the guy that was wearing that or the girl that was wearing that three piece suit. Mm-hmm. I loved that. Um, it makes an impression. Unfortunately, um, I've been told that every human makes a assumption about another person within the first eight seconds they see yep. them so within the first eight seconds of interfacing with someone they're already making an assumption about you mm-hmm. and unfortunately a lot of that is going to gear on your appearance and how you put yourself together yeah if you look a mess unfortunately a lot of people are just going to assume your work is a mess 
Right. But if you look kind of put together and buttoned up, they're going to be like, oh, it looks like they've got their stuff together. Right. So Mm -hmm. it does make a difference. It does. It does. And that doesn't mean you can't be edgy. It doesn't mean that you can't inject your personality into it. But, um, and that's the beauty of custom is you can kind of pick and choose what you do to show your personality in your suit Uh without being another guy in a black suit. Exactly. Yeah. And where do you see yourself in five years? In five years. Mm -hmm. So um, we are currently growing the Adam Ross brand here in San Antonio. Yeah, you are. We have just expanded to the office right next door to mine, and we've hired another clothier. Hey, Roham. Um, we <laughs> he are was looking... wonderful, by the way. He is. Super He's amazing. Um, definitely want to hire more clothiers. Uh, we are looking to do that down mm-hmm. the road. And then my ultimate goal, hopefully sooner than five years, is I would like to take this business model and duplicate it in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and expand mm. my area. So right now I am the area manager for San Antonio. Okay. Adam Os- you know, Adam Ross owns the business and he mm-hmm. is, you know, the face of Houston yeah. um, and has an office there in Houston. But I would like to kind of duplicate this and expand it to Dallas and mm. help oversee Dallas as well. So the Dallas Fort Worth area. So nice. So it, the, basically, there's just two stores: this one in Houston as and one right in da- mm-hmm. San Antonio. Wow, I'm surprised uh, Dallas wasn't the first choice over San Antonio. That's really interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, there was a clothier in Houston uh-huh. that was moving to San Antonio. He'd been working to at uh, Houston for a while, and. Um, asked if we could duplicate Houston here in San Antonio. Mm. And unfortunately, it just didn't work for him and his family. Um, I think it, it, it is hard. It, it's yeah. hard building a brand from the mm-hmm. ground up in a city that doesn't know you. Yeah. Um, so that's been my ultimate goal the first year I was with a company. I was like, look, I want to get our name out. I want to build the brand. I want to get my feet underneath me. Um, and really... Yeah, and it was perfect that you joined the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that was love a that. good move on your part. Yeah, I've joined Chambers. I've, I'm have i part of uh, Exotics and Mimosas. They're all about cool cars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm part of the Havana Boys. Shout out to my boys. They're a cigar club. Uh-huh. Um, girls are allowed to. Um, <laughs> so I uh, love it. Absolutely. I uh, love joining different organizations, different people. Um, just kind of, yeah, just put yourself out there that's the other thing i would definitely say for any new clothier or business owner Mm -hmm. or anybody you got to put yourself out there um it's a lot of networking it's Mm -hmm. a lot of talking it's a lot of socializing which i don't mind Um, yes that was one of my biggest draws to coming to adam ross is i had worked brick and mortars almost my entire Mm -hmm. life i've been in the same brick and mortar business for three years prior Mm -hmm. to joining adam ross and um you don't do a lot of socializing other than with your staff and with the clients you have um so when they were like look you're really gonna have to go out there you're gonna have to be social um I didn't realize I was as much of a connector Mm -hmm. because it never was really brought up in the in what I used to do yeah and now I realized you know what I love connecting people to people yeah like even if it doesn't come back to for me, for you, it's I'm just, just like somebody. Yes. I'm looking. It's so rewarding. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I want you to come to this group and meet these people, and I want you to come to this group and meet these people. Exactly. Um, this is somebody I think you should should know. You know, because it falls in your genre. Um, I love it. I thoroughly enjoy it. I love being social. I love going and meeting new people. And I'm super excited about what I do. So mm-hmm. that makes it really easy just for me just to, talk to talk about, about it. <laughs> like, yeah. this is what I do. Yeah. So. And um, I was going to add, like, just like in San Antonio, it's relationship, relationship-based relationship city. Absolutely. So networking is just kind of the utmost importance. And like you said, if you don't meet somebody who you can, like, directly help, you can indirectly help them by sending them somewhere else and be like, hey, I met uh, uh Gabriel and Christina, help, help you sell your home. Or if we, if I hear a woman who's talking about a suit, I will instantly think of you and be like, right. you need to go to her. I'm telling you, 100%. Right. So tell us the location of uh, where you're at. So we are located in the Venture X building in Stone Oak. There's multiples in the city. So we are the Stone Oak Venture X, not the North 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there are two up here. Um, so we are at 18911 Hardy Oak Boulevard. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great shared office space. And um, I, I do, I, I can't say we have a little office envy in the building. We've definitely tricked the offices out to mm-hmm. be more aligned oh, yeah. to what we do. Yes. So it is, it is a lot of fun. Um, people walk into the building and then when they come into our office, they're pleasantly surprised. They're like, oh, this is, this is nice. I yeah. was, we were yeah. pleasantly surprised. I'm expecting, I, I'm expecting kind of, I think when we hear, when we think of dressing rooms, we think of department stores. Right. And walking in instantly, I was just like, I like the lighting in here. It compliments me and right. not the harsh lighting that department stores have. It's just Or no atrocious. lighting. Or no lighting or at no all. Or no lighting at all. Yeah, we're, it's I'm like, why is it so dark in here? Yeah. Like, I can't see anything. Is this how they think they're going to sell clothes? Yeah, I yeah. I don't understand. I'm like, I thought this was blue. I got it home. It's purple. And- <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, we're almost up. Do you have anything else you want to add and uh, say to the YouTube world and to our uh, people who are watching right now? Uh, to- uh want to start off by saying thank you guys for well, having me you. on. Um, I've, I've, I've been on a couple of different podcasts. I, I honestly can say I was super excited about this one. Oh, yeah. I really was. <laughs> I was like, yay this is gonna be so much fun these people are just like if you haven't interfaced with this couple yet they are Mm. too much fun (laughs) so they're a blast um but yeah like if you have any questions and we're here I mean I've I've done so many consultations before uh we're not that's I think that one of the big differences between us and maybe some other custom places we're not the hard sell Mm. you can come in we'll pick stuff out We'll do a consultation, even if you're like, you know what, I can't do it right now, but I'm super excited about this. Um, I've had people are like, you know, wait until tax return. I'll be back. Yeah. I'm like, okay. I, <laughs> but they I need that you. goal to have but, something in yeah, mind. Or nice. you know what, I'm trying to hit a certain sales goal and this is going to be my reward to myself. Mm-hmm. So it's like, not necessarily, I can't afford this right now, but I'm going to make this a personal goal. Yeah. And you that need to see this it. is the yeah. reward if I hit this goal. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, absolutely. We are here to answer questions. Uh, I've had people come in just for consultations. I've had people come in before just to ask about weddings. And I, I will be the first one to tell them if for any reason we can't help them with what they want. Mm-hmm. Maybe they need it too soon or um, maybe it's not the pri- right price point for mm-hmm. them. I'll be the first one to guide them into another alternative mm. because if you lead with kindness, it's going to make a difference. It's a lasting like, I'm impression. like, look, I don't, I, I'm not going to be a clothing stop. I'm going to be like, oh, well, I can't help you. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. I was like, no, I get it. You need it in two weeks. We can't make a suit in two weeks. Mm-hmm. Our stuff takes four to six, in-house six to eight if yeah. you order it from another country. Um so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you, okay, this is why things don't fit you well. So this is what you need to buy. Mm. And then this is what you can do to take it to someone to alter to make it fit better. That's amazing. So I will give them as much honest like out like advice I can mm-hmm. so that they can get at least something that works for the time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, consultations are always free. Yeah, I I, okay. I tell people all the time. I'm like, hey, if you just want to come hang out for a little while, <laughs> I mean, we'll just hang out and chat. Like, yeah, this is a fun, mm. safe space. I just love that to kind of hang and talk okay. fashion, and not just fashion, but like, what can I do also to help your business? Because I'm a, a connector. So, like, who can I put in front of you that might help you? Nice, which I love. Yeah. Well, I'm genuinely, like, just authentically 100% down to my core excited to have our consultation Yay. with you and Yay. to get something. I'm like, can I have 10 suits right now? <laughs> right. Like, that excited. The, the Y'all don't understand the amount of choices and variety there are. Yeah. Just plethora just a huge abundance of stuff so heather thank you so much of course um we always leave our guests with a parting gift oh just like you i love to be creative and artistic so i do canvases and um you're actually our seventh guest so it's a lucky number yeah you see that canvas over there i did that one i did this one i did this one 
Uh, I didn't do that one. That's Amazon. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. But I have one for you today. Seven is my lucky number. My first name, my middle name, and my maiden name are all seven letters. Really? I'm a 777 girl. Well, this is our seventh podcast. Oh my gosh. It was meant to be. <laughs> and you know what? Today is the 14th. What is seven plus seven? 14. There you go. <laughs> Stop. Love so it. So we have a canvas for you. <gasps> oh my and there you go. I uh, put it wherever you like. <laughs> I don't think it'll fit in your office, but cool. I might put it over the couch in the entryway to the office. Okay. Our, like, little landing spot, but I'm gonna have to get a frame. Okay. If not, I might put it up in my house because this would look lovely in my stairwell. Oh well, thank you. Oh, I know I have our my artwork all over the place. <laughs> I love all the colors, and it's got silver in it, which I love. I love metallics. Metallic crayons and melting them are just I'm chef's more, kiss. I'm a white girl, girl, gold girl. I'm not a yellow gold. So. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad you love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, this is amazing. I did not expect this. Thank I know. <laughs> well, surprise. So cool. Oh my gosh, guys. How awesome is that? And I she know. signed it on the back. And, <laughs> and you know what? Oh. I'm one of those people. I think if I was like doing what you're doing in a sense, right? I would fall in love with the suit and be like, I'm like slow key happy for you, but a little low key jealous that, mm. oh man, I really, that's a great design. I really wish I did this. So sometimes I fall in love with canvases. I'm like, dang. That's really nice. I wish I this kept that for myself. Because <laughs> I have an abstract in my um, hallway at my house that my great grandmother did. Really? Like back in the 54, I think. Uh huh. Mm hmm. And okay. this would be beautiful right next to it. So I don't know. Well, let me know. Adam, you might just get a lithograph of this one. <laughs> I don't know. Well, thank you so much, Heather. Yes. Um, Tell everybody how they can get in touch with you before yes, we head out. Absolutely. So you can find me on LinkedIn uh, under Heather Wren, and that's R E N N. We spell it with a unique twist. <laughs> um, you can also find me on Instagram other, under Heather Wren and Facebook under Heather Wren. You can always visit our Adam Ross Custom website. Uh, if you're looking for an appointment, you can always book through there or you can call me directly. I do have my ooh, ooh, Hawaii number. It is 808-280-5923. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, thank you so much, Heather, for being on our podcast today. Absolutely. Ooh. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, our seventh podcast. Be on the lookout next month. We are going to be having Jason Glass, one of the top producers in San Antonio as far as real estate goes. So he has an amazing team and he sells just luxury homes year after year so he's got a great personality and we're so looking forward to him but thank you again so much mm -hmm. heather uh subscribe if you haven't already we uh gabriel and i have our monthly podcast mm -hmm. obviously the first no second thursday of every month and uh yeah we also do a ton of luxury listings so everybody loves looking at luxury homes so you need to make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video and uh leave your comments below we love it it helps our algorithm so like subscribe comment and we thank you guys so much for watching goodbye from gabriel and i and heather and we will see you guys later bye bye